Imagine a robot built not out of metal and gears, but instead out of living tissue. Pieced together cell by cell, this robot can not only repair itself, but is also less than a millimeter in size and can even create copies of itself. Now imagine that this robot is designed not by humans, but in the memory cells of an AI running supercomputer. While this conjures up a creature from the latest sci-fi thriller, this organism is entirely real, and it's known as a xenobot. While its name has a distinctly dystopian sci-fi ring to it, it really just tells us what it is. The bot in the name comes from the word robot, as they're built piece by piece, much like a robot. And Xeno comes not from the xenomorphs of the movie Aliens, but from the African clawed frog, Xenopus Leavis. The earliest xenobots were constructed in a simple experiment, which asked the question, what would happen if you removed stem cells from a frog and put them in a solution of salt water? That these are stem cells is important, as they have the potential to become any other type of cell, for example, a skin cell or a muscle cell. What scientists saw when they conducted the experiment was fascinating. The cells coalesced into an organism, which was made out of frog cells, but was not in fact a frog. These cell clusters started growing and eventually even moving. The motion was caused by the development of cilia, small hair-like extensions, which would ordinarily spread mucus around the frog's skin. In the Petri dish though, these cilia acted like little paddles, allowing the xenobots to move around. Now in motion, the xenobots exhibited another strange behavior. They could collect particles in the solution, coalescing them together. Scientists then asked the question, what would happen if the particles in the solution were stem cells themselves? This is where things got really interesting. The xenobots moved around, collecting the stem cells and grouped them together into little clumps. After four or five days, these cell clumps sprouted cilia of their own and were now a new generation of xenobots, xenobot children. The xenobots could reproduce not using DNA like every other organism on the planet, but by this clumping technique known as spontaneous kinematic self-replication. Now what's fascinating here is that this behavior wasn't programmed in beforehand, but emergent behavior. The xenobot's shape and movements were entirely responsible for creating the next generation. While these early xenobots were fascinating, there was room for improvement. They didn't move all that well and weren't even that good at the scooping behavior which allowed them to reproduce. They could only produce one additional generation. So how to improve upon the initial design? Taking a cue from nature, the scientists decided to evolve a better xenobot, not through random mutations of DNA over millions of years, but by trying something similar. They fed the basic building blocks of the xenobot, the skin cells and now cardiac cells as well, into a supercomputer and generated numerous random configurations. They then tested these candidate xenobots in a virtual simulation where the physics of the real world had been modeled. The virtual xenobots were tested for their ability to move around. The winners were kept, while the losers were deleted. After many rounds of tests, the best simulations were ready to be built by the scientists. And it looked a little like, well, Pac-Man. Which makes sense, of course. One of the traits they were searching for was to improve the clumping behavior. And what better way than a big scoop? Design in hand. The scientists now needed to build the Xenobot, a painstaking process, as it has to be done by hand under a microscope. So how did they do? The newly improved Xenobots were better at movement, swarming, and could now produce up to four generations of offspring, surviving longer than the originals. A marked improvement over the earlier simple clumps. So, AI improved self-replicating living robots? Should we possibly be a little worried? While it may be concerning that this research is partially funded by the US Defense Department, there's really not much to worry about at this stage. While the Xenobots can replicate, they only last a few generations on their own and only have enough nutrients in the cells for about 10 days of survival. And while that can be extended much longer if they're placed in a nutrient-rich broth, they need to constantly be supplied with new stem cells to replicate. 
once humans aren't involved in the supply of these cells, the xenobots die out. So why make these strange creatures at all? While xenobots are the very first step in the process of creating a useful organism from scratch, one can imagine the possibilities. With their small size and biological nature, future medical xenobots might be able to clean out our arteries, preventing heart disease, or deliver drugs directly to a tumor. Their innate collecting ability could be helpful for rounding up microplastics in the ocean or cleaning up radioactive waste at the microscopic level. The possibilities seem limitless, and why shouldn't they? Xenobots are essentially made out of the same stuff as us.